Hey guys, it's Phil Zero here from Punk Rock Slots, and this video is going to be a bit different than our usual gameplay videos. Today I want to talk about gambling budgeting, but from a completely different perspective. I've got four tips to share today, and the first three are what I think are kind of unexpected and maybe even hot takes, and the fourth is actual gameplay strategy. I wanted to structure this video in a way where all four tips are sequential, meaning the thought process starts at step one and then goes to two and then three and then four. And, and these are things that you can think about and apply immediately. But just in general, this video is going to be a good starting point on how to budget safely and responsibly. Bit of an obvious disclaimer, this is by no means financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do or what to think. This is just me sharing my approach. Do people actually get sued for not saying that? So when we hear the words gambling budgeting, a lot of us jump to how much money to bring, bankroll building, or what games to play. The way I approach this starts at even before all that. So without further ado, let's get to tip number one, which is accepting gambling as a hobby. So for our first point, this is kind of a philosophical woo-woo perspective, or even holistic if you will, but I think this is a neglected topic that deserves more attention. And while to some it may seem even too obvious, I think it holds a lot of weight in how budgeting should be approached. So if you're watching this, I can safely assume that we're all gamblers here, or at least to some degree, whether you're a casual gambler or more involved, Gambling simply a part of our lifestyle and it's just one of our hobbies. Now there's always been a bit of a stigma around being a gambler, which I think is completely unfair. Everyone's got their thing, right? Like you've got musicians that spend thousands of dollars on instruments, you've got watch guys, or you've got car guys, or you've got sports guys, and by guys I mean girls too, of course. The point is, everyone's got their thing that they choose to spend their money on, whether it may or may not bring them some kind of financial return, or however they want to justify it. But really, that's irrelevant, because what it does bring them is emotional return. They love doing what they're doing, and it makes them happy, so all the more power to them. Unfortunately, over time, this has somehow been twisted into like a negative thing. I want to completely squash that and put it in a more positive light. You know, it's a beautiful thing that everyone has different hobbies and interests. That's kind of the beauty of being human. How boring would that be if everyone thought the same and did the same things and liked the same things? And you've heard this a million times, and I've even been guilty of this myself. You know when someone spends a lot of money on something that you're not particularly interested in, you automatically think like, uh, I can't believe you spent five grand on a purse, or I can't believe you spent three grand on concert tickets. Well, on that same coin, they can be like, well, I can't believe you lost five grand at the casino. But just like how that purse or that concert brings them joy and entertainment for our type of people, we get that feeling from gambling. Who's to say what can make you happy or not? So when we accept that gambling is simply a hobby and a part of our lifestyle, I think that minimizes any like shame or guilt associated with being a gambler. And from there, we can approach budgeting with a more clear and pragmatic framework. Now let's get to tip number two, which is sunk cost entertainment. Stemming from my last point, gambling should be thought of as strictly entertainment, or more specifically, it is a sunk cost form of entertainment. In case anyone doesn't know, sunk cost is just a way of saying the money is spent and gone. Kind of like if you bought tickets to like a concert or if you paid for a flight. We paid for the tickets, the money's gone, and now we can just sit back and enjoy the experience that we paid for. And this is the notion that I use to set my gambling budgets, as in how much I will actually gamble that day or week or month. And I can't tell you exactly what your gambling budget should be because obviously everyone's financial situations are different. But the main takeaway I want to stress here is that your gambling budget should simply be part of your entertainment budget. For some that could be $500 a month, and for others that could be $5,000 a month. And needless to say, for me at least, you know, that amount's always going to change month to month depending on what I have going on in my life. Some months I gamble more, some months I gamble less, maybe some months I don't gamble at all. We all have different responsibilities and priorities. We have friends, family, their hobbies, work, and so on. We get some comments that are like, how are you guys okay with losing $500 like that? 
well, this is how. I'm okay with losing because my gambling budget is simply part of my entertainment budget. And that's the amount I would have spent anyway if I were more interested in something else. And approaching budgeting with this mindset, it's a good way to keep your mentality in check. If you consider that money already spent, then you can just chill and have fun with it. Otherwise, it's really easy to become stressed or feel guilty. Then you start having those thoughts, like every time you lose 50 bucks, you'll be like, eh, I could have filled up my car with that. I could have bought a nice dinner with that. Eh. You get so caught up in the money that you're not even having fun anymore. And of course, most dangerously, this can lead to over gambling or serious financial issues. At the end of the day, we all want to win, of course. But if you're not even having fun, then it's not entertainment anymore. You wouldn't spend your rent money on a trip to Disneyland, so you probably shouldn't spend your rent money gambling. On that same coin, if you're not okay with losing, then gambling's probably not for you. In that case, you're probably better off spending your gambling money on a trip to Disneyland. So once again, sunk cost entertainment. You pay to have some fun, and then whatever happens, happens. You know that old phrase we hear all the time, don't gamble what you can't afford to lose? That holds true. So if nothing else, just keep that in mind. And this brings us to our third tip, which is defining your stop limits. Now, there's a bit of a twist. With stop limits, I'm not just talking about money. In my opinion, stop limits should also include two other important factors, time and enjoyment. So a lot of people go into it thinking, if I double my money, I'm done. I'm leaving. And while that may sound good on the surface, I actually fundamentally disagree with it. I know this is a hot take and I'll tell you why. There are two factors where I think this method falls short. Number one, we are primitively emotional and therefore irrational human beings. We can't control this, it's built right into our species, unless you're a sociopath. And the second thing is that, well, we're gamblers, meaning we're gonna be back to gamble. So if you're trying to find ways to like, fight this, you're trying to fight against your own nature. And I think that that's not sustainable. So instead, why not just try and embrace it and work with it and try and find ways to manage it better? So take this example. You just arrived at the casino. You were excited to play all day. Maybe you got off work and you had to drive an hour to get there. You had to wait for some friends. You had to look for parking. Maybe you even had to line up to get in. So you finally get in. You sit down at a machine. You put your money in. And on your first spin, you double your money. Are you just going to turn around and go home? You've only been there for all the two minutes. Did you even have fun? You know, some of us with like stronger willpower might be able to just pick up and go right away. But for most of us, probably not. So with this in mind, why even set that rule at all? I think that this is actually detrimental because if you break your stop limit rule that easily with the excuse of, oh, I just got here, then what's the point of having that rule? Most likely you'll take a break and then play a bit more and if you lose, you're gonna fall into this endless cycle of trying to win your money back. And if you win your money back, you'll be like, well, I can't leave now. I can't leave with what I came with. Why'd I even come? So you'll keep playing and that's what the casino wants. Remember, the casino and the slot machines, they don't care if you've been playing for 10 minutes or 10 hours. They don't care if you just hit a jackpot. And there are some exceptions like the must hit buys, but for the vast majority of cases, it just doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go on a slight tangent here, but a common tip that I hear from other gamblers is to take breaks during your gambling session. Why? I mean, it's not bad. You can get up and stretch your legs and get a drink, but you can't really say that it's good strategy either. It's not good or bad, it just doesn't matter. The slot machine doesn't care if you took a break or not. So again, nothing wrong with taking a break. But to say that this somehow increases your chances of winning just doesn't make any sense. You could argue there's some psychological benefit to taking a break, but when it comes to the game mechanics, it just doesn't matter. And you can think of it this way. One five-hour session at the casino versus five one-hour sessions at the casino does not make a net difference in your winning probability. Remember, the casino always wins in the long run. The results of our little individual sessions at the casino are minuscule, if not negligible, in like the grand scheme of the equation that the casino's playing. 
They don't care if you win or lose that session because they know that over the long run, they're still gonna win, and that's the game that they're playing. So that begs the question, well, what do we do? So the easiest way to counteract this is to not play into their equation at all. And to do that, we can redefine our metrics. So my approach is simply go back to the fundamental ideas. Remember, I'm here for entertainment only, and the money that I brought with me is a sunk cost. So once I've accepted that, I can't lose if my main metric is enjoyment. If I'm having fun, then I'm winning no matter what happens. And this way, you're in control, and your happiness and sanity aren't at the mercy of the slot machines. I know this is a bit Marcus Aurelius, but it holds true. You can't control the odds, but you can control your mindset. So getting back to the stop limits, the things I check in with myself are how long do I plan to stay for? Am I even still having fun? If I'm tired or bored or I'm yawning, then it's probably time to leave whether I'm up or down. I've had days where I had like a $5,000 gambling budget and after playing for a few hours I left being down $20. Again, your odds don't change the longer you stay at the casino, and not every session needs to be like a huge win or a huge loss, but every session should be enjoyable. That's kind of the whole point of being down there. So every now and then you might hear Catfish and I say like, what's your vibe or vibe check? And in a way that's what we're talking about. The vibe's probably off. What's the vibe? Vibe check, vibe check, vibe check. Vibe check. And to be clear, I'm not saying to completely disregard money, you know, that's not realistic. But I'm just saying to consider time and enjoyment as part of your stop limits as well. And throughout your gambling session, you should continuously check in with yourself and reevaluate as your day goes on. And I promise you, you're gonna thank yourself for this. Now for our last and most practical tip number four, and that's playing the right bet amount. So for a last tip, here's some concrete, practical play strategy. And you would be surprised how many slot players don't know this. And if you want to maximize your chances of winning, on slots at least, you usually want to bet the highest amount per spin that your budget allows. So the kind of safe rule of thumb is that your bet amount per spin should be about 1% of your bankroll. So for example, if you put in $100, your bet per spin should be about a dollar. This is just a rule of thumb, just take it with a pinch of salt and season to taste. I personally play about 2 to 5% of my bankroll per spin, but that's just my taste and my style and what I find fun. And this is not just a simple bet big, win big type thing. On many slot machines, if you look at the rules, regardless of volatility, the higher the denomination you play, the higher your actual chances are of hitting a bonus. And on some machines, you don't even qualify for the jackpots if you don't max bet. And this is not speculation or some theory. This is built into the machine. This is built into the code of how the slot machine works. Take Mega Diamond, for example, one of my favorite games. It says right here in the game rules, the higher the denomination you play, the more diamonds appear. And of course, the diamonds are the wilds and the progressive triggers and the bonus triggers. So that means if, for example, my budget were $200, that I would have a higher chance per spin of a winning hit if I played 100 spins at $2 than I would if I played 200 spins at $1. I'm playing $200 in both scenarios, but if I play a higher denomination, my chance per spin of winning is higher. And while they don't disclose what the actual percentage difference is, we still have this information. And with this, this can open up a lot of doors on how we can choose to play. So for example, maybe I have a bigger budget that day and I want to bet bigger for a better chance of hitting a bonus. Or maybe I bet a smaller amount for longer gameplay and just accept that my chances per spin are a bit lower of hitting a bonus. Or I can pick something like in between those extremes. Or I could pick a different game entirely that doesn't denomination discriminate. Or maybe I skip a session and double my budget for the next session. So as you can see, what I'm trying to show is when we know why the bet amount matters, we can then act with intention and set our budgets accordingly. We can then make better decisions on what it is we're trying to achieve rather than just 
willy nilly betting whatever and having an undefined budget. So always check the game rules so you know what you're getting into and then you can play accordingly. And again, just remember to have fun. You paid for this experience, so just enjoy it. So to wrap up, the main idea I want to challenge everyone with is to play by your own rules, play your own game, and be in control of why you're gambling. This is something the casinos have no control over. The main narrative when it comes to gambling budgeting seems to be stuff like you must have the willpower to leave when you're up or when you're down, only gamble once a month, or don't gamble at all. And I'm kind of just here like, what about just enjoying it for what it actually is? The house always wins in the end, we know this. They're playing a whole different game. We can't control this. But what we can control are our own metrics and our mindset going into it. And when we know why we're doing what we're doing, we can then act with purpose and intention. And when we do that, we can live happier and healthier lives. So let me know in the comments what your budgeting strategies are. This is a bit different than our usual slot play videos, so I'm interested in what you guys think. Did you agree or did you disagree? Let me know. And don't worry, you're not going to offend me if you disagree. I'm always open to learning new perspectives. So if you can hit that subscribe button, the bell button, like the video if you liked it. A few clicks really helps us out a ton. And if you want to see more, check out this video where we recently gambled $1,000 for hitting 1,000 subscribers. So let's go have some fun, let's gamble smart, let's gamble safe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Haha. <laughs>